The feds gave us a call and said, did you finance a, a, a car for this guy? Because, you know, he's about to go down. We see a lot of things and people will do a lot of things to try to get into a car that probably isn't the right fit for them. So without giving away trade secrets, there's a few things that people will try that aren't a good idea. So the first thing, and this is probably the most common one, is since we're underwriting based on looking at your cash flow uh, that, that we see in your bank statements, people think it's a good idea to pass bank statements that aren't theirs. Okay, this can take a couple of forms. We've had folks who, you know, will go in and, and you know, white out names, try to write it over. I have people who, you know, do more advanced editing and, and Photoshop or, or what have you. There's all sorts of inconsistencies that, that that brings in, and usually you can spot them just by looking at the bank statements. Some of the fakes are better than others. And what we do is a very simple step. People, when they apply, will verify their bank accounts through a service called Yodly and which gives us a, a one-time connection to just verifies that you're the owner of that account and the balances that the statements say matches what the bank says. It's a very quick step and really weeds out a lot, of, you know, weeds out nearly 100% of those fake bank statements. The second thing that we see, and we saw this a lot during the course of the pandemic, is people who wanna use government loans to buy their cars. When the Paycheck Protection Program launched, we started to see a lot of people who about four to six weeks later were very interested in exotic cars. This is a bad idea for any number of reasons. There's a, a, a moral issue with it. Uh, the fact that you and I as taxpayers are, are footing that bill for a PPP loan that's going out. But the other issue with it is it's readily traceable. And what we've seen with a number of, of potential customers is they go out and try to do this stuff and the government quickly tracks it down and, and says, okay, there's a direct line from your PPP loan to the purchase of, of these cars and they get repossessed right away. In the early days, before we were well aware of this, a customer came in and had substantial banks, uh, looked like a lot of income going through. He was a, a, a YouTube celebrity, a guy named Arkansas Mo. And search this one up. He's, he's well known as, as having been busted uh, for a PPP fraud, but he took a series of fraudulent PPP loans totaling, I think, northwards of $8 million, used it for a, a car from us, as well as several other cars, a bunch of watches, jewelry, etc. We were very lucky in this case because we spotted the fraud and were able to work to repossess the, the car, which was at Rolls Royce Wraith, before it had gotten titled. So Fortunately enough, it was still on MSO, still considered new. If that car had gotten registered before we got it, we're dropping $150,000 of value. In this case, the feds gave us a call and said, did you finance a, a, a car for this guy? Because you know he's about to go down. And, and sure enough, one of his purchases was a Rolls Royce Wraith from us. And fortunately, due to that call, we were able to step in and pick up the Wraith before it had even gotten registered. And that protected us from a huge loss in value because that car was, was still on MSO and still considered new. Another couple of weeks and that car was registered, we would have been hit with $100,000, $150,000 of loss value. That being said, there are a lot of legitimate businesses who took PPP loans during this time and getting a PPP loan is not a disqualifying factor from getting a car. What we do is we screen everybody against the nationwide list of everybody who got a PPP loan. And if we see the person's name on the list, what we're really looking for is, could you have afforded that car before you got the loan? If that's the case, then fine, we're happy to work with you. But it's the person who comes in, gets an ex excessively high loan, and uses that to buy a car that's well out of their means. That's the, that's the kind of red flag that, that we just can't work with. One of the things that we do for, for folks who are collectors or own their vehicles outright are sale leasebacks. So sale leaseback is when you tap into the equity of your car, borrow against it, by selling the car to us and then leasing it back from us. So why people use this, they may have a short-term business opportunity and need cash quickly. They may want to borrow against their existing collection to, to add a new vehicle to the collection or anything where you might want to, to 
uh, to tap some equity from your cars. And use the sale leaseback, you can tap into the equity in the car, you can keep driving it, and you don't have to take your Bugatti to the pawn store. In this particular case, we had an applicant come in and we're looking to do a sale lease back for their 61 uh, 300 SL Roadster. This car was actually uh, financed with someone else at a, quite a high rate. And we were able to come in, refinance the, the car. It was, it, it was an advance, you know, northwards of $750,000. This was probably late 19 where we initiated this lease and everything was going well for a while. After a little while, the lessees, or husband and wife, started running into a little bit of trouble with the payments. And it, you know, and it wasn't that they weren't paying, but that the payments started to be a little bit late. They were they're bouncing the regular payments, then they'd catch up with a wire a couple days later. Then the wire started getting, you know, be about 15 days late, but they're still getting things done. And then COVID hit, and, and COVID was tough on the family. First, the husband had COVID and was hospitalized seriously. You know, and then they, they caught up and, and because he was in the hospital, it was hard to, to get the wires to work. Um, and he came out and then the, the wife later uh, had COVID and, and she was in the hospital for a bit and had some complications afterwards. And we're really struggling to, to get the payments here. And eventually we started to get into the 30 to 60 day delinquency window. And although they're communicative, that gets into the place where it starts to become a little bit worrisome for us. We certainly get concerned, especially with a, a car of this magnitude. At one point, they stopped being communicative. We actually initiated a replevin process so that we could get possession of the car and work out a settlement with them. They had plenty of equity in the car. If they needed to, they could, they could have always liquidated it, put money back in their pocket and get out cleanly, but we didn't want a protracted situation to come up. Well, of course, when you file a replevin situation, you're gonna serve the, the customer uh, to make sure they're aware of the lawsuit. And when the husband got served, he immediately called us and said, what do you mean my lease? I own that car outright. Rewind it back a little bit, found out that the wife, evidently, had fraudulently gotten a, cop a duplicate copy of the title and used that to get the original financing and then continued the fraud by refinancing with us uh, and continued to make the payments, supposedly to support the lavish lifestyle of her son from a prior marriage. When confronted with the lawsuit, the husband who was, as many collectors are, extraordinarily attached to this particular car, worked with us to work out the situation, make sure he was able to, to keep the car, and we were able to come to a, a good settlement there. He still owns and, and has the car in his possession, whether that same relationship is working with his wife, I can't report on that. We'd like to thank the Ticket Clinic for supporting VinWiki this month. When you get a ticket, no matter where it happens, you're risking points on your license, costly fines, insurance premium increases, and risks of suspension or jail time. So it's more important than ever to have great representation. The Ticket Clinic is a nationwide law firm that can help you fight a ticket no matter where you get it. It's easier than ever to start a relationship with them. You'll just take your ticket, snap a picture of it, and text that picture to 305305. You can also reach them at the link in the description below to thank them for their support of Venwiki and fight your ticket with the Ticket Clinic.